Hello and welcome to a look at indoor sports for the Commodore 64. The game that was made by Sports Time and released by Mindscape. In indoor sports, you can play one to four players in three different indoor sport event kind of things. You have bowling, you have darts, and you have uh, shuttlepuck, air hockey, table hockey, whatever it's known as. And as you start each event kind of thing, you have various different settings, actually quite a generous amount of settings you can set. Then pin bowling. Yeah. I will say for reference, I wasn't only really concerned about how I play it because of the facial expressions from your player when you screw up are divine. You move your bowler up and down and uh, in order to set his starting position, then the marker will start um, going up and down the lane to set the angle at which you release the ball, the bowling ball of course, and um, then you have to make sure to hit the fire button just as your bowler is, uh, the ball is touching the play field in order to get a perfect release. And then after that you have some after touch, just to make things wonky. The difference between your starting position when you start bowling and the angle at which you're aiming the shot has to be quite close to each other or you'll get gutter balls left, right and center. The timing for releasing the ball perfectly is actually quite tight. A bit too early and uh, you will get a slightly off uh, line aim and a touch too late and the bowler will smack his face flat into the floor. It is something you definitely have to get a feel for and compared to other bowling games it may seem a bit basic but bear in mind of course this game was from 1987 or is from 1987 and the amount of bowling games available at that point wasn't necessarily um, something that uh, you could count on more than one hand. So having access to computer bowling at all, and a decent one at that, is uh, not something to be scoffed at. It is, I can spoil, most likely the most enjoyable of those three events and most likely the event anyone would play continuously after having fooled around with the other two events. But I'm just going to uh, let this run a bit more. As uh, you can probably tell by my score, um, I'm not doing too well, but um, if you look at the player reaction, it's just epic. I know it's silly, I know it's simple, but uh, it made me smile every single time. He was looking like, oh no, not again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we are almost done with the bowling part, so let's uh, skip to our darts. You can uh, play uh, one or two players. And you can set again various options when it comes to playing darts. And uh, for my own sanity and for viewer discussion, I'm going to switch off the starting with doubles and finishing with doubles because of the way the game plays. Just to get a bit more time, I decided to set the score to 501 and increase the speed slightly. Darts. 301, 501, 701, 901, 1101, whatever people decide on 
uh, starting from and um, of course in normal darts you would depending on what rules you play with have to start with a, any double and close out with any double which of course means that you would have to count your score to make absolutely sure that you don't um, try to aim for a higher number than you need and remember to divide it by two because you need to finish with a double but of course because we're not playing with that setting in this game it's just a question of scoring as many points as possible now the way it plays is you start by moving the dart down the bottom of the screen and then you click or press the button to set angle and then after that you set power the angles are the right hand corner and the power is on the left corner mixing and matching the power and angle is something that uh, can take quite a while to get a good feel and understanding for when what does what and how and one of the main reasons i disabled doubles out specifically is that if you are trying to aim at the lower doubles they can be incredibly obnoxious to hit because if you over angle or under angle or under power or over power you are Dart is your dart is going to hit the wall or the floor or outside of the dartboard, which of course is not particularly useful. Personally, I would have preferred if you were controlling the actual aim with the joystick, possibly a bit wobbly to make it uh, not 100% accurate and then set the power instead. Uh, I think the combination of having to set an angle and the power. And of course, depending on the speed you set the game to play at, both the power and angle thingy will move significantly faster. Meaning that doing something consistently can become, I wouldn't say impossible, but it requires quite a few games in order to get a feel for angle, speed, and general aim. Again, just like with the bowling, the age of the game considered not an awful lot of darts available and i suppose this is decent enough of what it is but it could be so much better and so much less obnoxious than what it is i'm not necessarily saying we need to have darts like in yakuza um kiwami i think it was kiwami 2 well you basically point and click in order to score perfectly but uh, yeah anyway onwards to the shuttle puck the shuttle puck whatever it's called this of course is um, an interesting little game where you have two players each for the paddle and a puck on the board and then you need to try and knock it into your opposing players gold box in order to score points and just for the fun of it i set the speed the game speed to the fastest which definitely benefits the computer significantly more than the benefits you not much to it you move the paddle with the joystick and if you hold down the fire you will move the paddle faster and then you try to keep the puck out of your gold box thing and uh, into your opponents it is not necessarily the most exciting game type in the world um, it can be hilarious to play on a real table but the computer version especially against the computer which will either play like a complete numbskull or like an absolute world-class star um, it is a bit i mean i, I did find it so far as an enjoyable, but uh, overall it's not anything to write home, home about, even. But at least it gives me some time to talk about the game. Graphically, for the age, I think it's decent enough. The different events are 
I mean, it's a certain graphical style. It's supposed to be almost, I don't know, clubhouse kind of thing. And as such, it worked perfectly fine. Not bad for the time it was released, but uh, yeah, not much to say about it. The title music, the uh, different games music is actually quite enjoyable. It's not the most complicated and not the most advanced music in the world, but I do find it enjoyable. It has a sort of a leisurely sound to it, so you know it's time to kick back and relax a bit with a bit of indoor sports. The gameplay, um, it is what it says on the tin. Um, depending on how you find the various different events, you may find more uh, one or more of them more or less enjoyable than others. And uh, the bowling is always fun, especially when you've got someone else to play with. But um, darts can be an excruciating pain to play, especially if you play with double on and double off, and you end up uh, needing to hit the lower part of the dartboard. Um, you can uh, find that the, the games can uh, extend to quite the distance, which can be rather boring. Well, Shuttlepuck, I suppose having it available to play is nice enough, but I mean, if you uh, are that desperate to play it, you should definitely play it on a real board because it's infinitely more fun. And uh, of course, um, mocking your opponent while playing it is uh, part of the enjoyment. Oh no, indoor sports is possibly only really enjoyable for the bowling, but uh, if you can get someone to play with, it's not half bad. On that note, thanks for watching, take care, see you next time. Bye bye for now.